Hi, Madeline. I was going to sit down and read my own book, but then I decided I would much rather read Corduroy. And if I was going to read Corduroy, I'd much rather read it to you. So how about I read Corduroy, and I will record myself reading Corduroy, and then you can watch me and listen to me reading Corduroy. Okay? Here we go. Corduroy by Don Freeman. Oh, look, Mommy wrote in this book. She put her name in it, Jen B. <laughs> that was only with permission. She wouldn't have written in a book without GB saying it was okay, because you don't write in books usually. Corduroy is a bear who once lived in the toy department of a big store. Day after day, he waited with all the other animals and dolls for somebody to come along and take him home. And there he is right there, little old Corduroy. The store was always filled with shoppers buying all sorts of things, but no one ever seemed to want a small bear in green corduroy. Then one morning, a little girl stopped and looked straight into corduroy's bright eyes. Oh, Mommy, she said. Look, there's the very bear I've always wanted. Not today, dear, her mother sighed. I've spent too much already. Besides, he doesn't look new. He's lost the button to one of his shoulder straps. There's Corduroy. He is hoping and hoping he's going to be going home, but Mother said no, they have already spent too much money. Does your mommy ever say that to you? Not today. We've already spent our limit. Corduroy watched them sadly as they walked away. I didn't know I'd lost a button, he said to himself. Tonight, I will go see if I can find it. There he is, watching Lisa and her mom go. And there he is, discovering that he's lost a button. What an adventure he will have very soon. Late that evening, when all the shoppers had gone and the doors were shut and locked, Corduroy climbed carefully down from his shelf and began searching everywhere on the floor for his lost button. Where do you think he's going to think he finds it, Madeline? <gasps> Suddenly he felt the floor moving under him. Quite by accident, he had stepped onto an escalator, and up he went. Could this be a mountain, he wondered? I think I've always wanted to climb a mountain. There he is, on the escalator, what he thinks is a mountain. He stepped off the escalator as it reached the next floor, and there before his eyes was a most amazing sight tables and chairs and lamps and sofas and rows and rows of beds. Oh, this must be a palace, Corduroy gasped. I guess I've always wanted to live in a palace. Okay. He has landed in the furniture department, right? He thinks it's a palace. He wandered around admiring the furniture. This must be a bed, he said. I've always wanted to sleep in a bed. And up he crawled onto a large, thick mattress. All at once, he saw something small and round. Why, here's my button, he cried, and he tried to pick it up. But like all other buttons on the mattress, it was tied down tight. Look at him pulling on that. Oh, most mattresses have buttons, or at least they used to. I'm not sure they do anymore. Corduroy yanked and pulled with both paws until pop, off came the button, and off the mattress Corduroy toppled. Bang into a tall floor lamp. Over it fell with a crash. Uh-oh. He's being a bit mischievous. Corduroy didn't know it, but there was someone else awake in the store. The night watchman. He was going his rounds on the floor above when he heard the crash and he came dashing down the escalator. Now who in the world did that, he exclaimed. Someone must be hiding around here. Hmm, who could it be? He flashed his light under and over sofas and beds until he came to the biggest bed of all. A 
and there he saw two fuzzy ears sticking up from under the cover. That's Corduroy, isn't it? Hello, he said. How did you get upstairs? The watchman tucked Corduroy under his arm and carried him down the escalator and set him on the shelf in the toy department with the other animals and dolls. Corduroy looks a little sleepy. I think he had a pretty big adventure, don't you think? He needs to rest a little. Corduroy was actually just waking up when the first customers came into the store that morning. And there, looking at him with a wide, swarm smile, was the same little girl he'd seen the day before. I'm Lisa, she said, and you're going to be my very own bear. Last night I counted what I've saved in my piggy bank, and my mother said I could bring you home. Can you imagine how exciting that is for both of them? She saved her money. Shall I put him in a box for you, asked the sales lady. Oh, no, thank you, Lisa answered, and she carried Corduroy home in her arms. She ran all the way up four flights of stairs into her family's apartment and straight to her own room. Oh, you're going up to her apartment. Soon he'll be in her bedroom. Corduroy blinked. There was a chair and a chest of drawers, and alongside a girl-sized bed stood a little bed, just the right size for him. The room was small, nothing like that enormous palace in the department store. This must be home, he said. I know I've always wanted a home. Lisa sat down with Corduroy on her lap and began to sew a button on his overalls. I like you the way you are, she said, but you will be a bit more comfortable with your shoulder strap fastened. She's fixing him all up and look at their gorgeous bedroom. Oh, so cozy and happy looking, isn't it? It's got flowers on the windowsill. You must be a friend, said Corduroy. I've always wanted a friend. Me too, said Lisa, and gave him a big hug. And that, my dear, is one of my favorite stories, Corduroy. In a week or two, I'm going to be there and we can read together, okay, Moo? But until then, I hope you enjoy listening to Corduroy. GB enjoyed reading it to you. Love you. Bye-bye.